go to work and then come home the same way they went to work. My name is Krista Shade and I work at the Riverine Grazier, a regional weekly newspaper based in Hay in the Riverina area of New South Wales. In January 2023, I picked up and wrote a story on the sale of Gundaline Station after National Senator Perrin Davey called for transparency over the decision to allow foreign-owned companies to purchase Australian farms. I look after the rural pages for our newspaper and the sale and the $121 million sale price of such a well-known farm just up the road from us I thought was a great story for our local audience. Dutch company Optifarm had sold the 15,000 or so hectare irrigation farm to Ozentech, a subsidiary of Hong Kong registered companies Jinsheng Textiles and Smart Materials Limited and Melbourne company First Ecology Limited. The new owners, Ozentech, re-engaged customised farming management or CFM who are based in Moree to run the day-to-day -day operations of the farm. CFM says that the owners are responsible for new labour hiring policies. So our story ran and I didn't think much of it afterwards until I was contacted by staff at Gunderline Station working under the new owners. What they told me opened up a whole new chapter in this really complex story. The workers said they had read the story that ran in January 23 and when they needed somewhere to turn they decided to come to the River Engrasier. This was in about August and October last year in 2023. They claimed the new owners had been removing Australian workers and replacing them with foreign nationals. They also claimed that the Chinese based company is simply using the Aussie farm to grow what is seen as clean cotton and other food and fibre to satisfy its international couture customers, but more about that later. The workers told me that containers from China had been opened on site at Gundaline, just 70 kilometres from town between Hay and, and Griffith and it was found to be harbouring bugs and seeds. The Australian Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry was contacted in October but did not comment on the allegations or their investigations and findings. But images were provided to the River Engrasier showing spray painted warnings on the contents of the containers. AFF departmental representative sprayed do not move on the pipes taken from the container. The workers also made claims that a senior CFM staffer engaged in bullying behaviour. They claimed CFM allowed workers to work around the clock in contravention of the requirements of international fashion houses. In October 2023, when we've published the second story, CFM's Andrew Whitlock firmly denied any wrongdoing in the company. CFM manages irrigation and dry land farms across New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria. CFM senior managers have at no time harassed any employee. CFM and its senior staff have gone above and beyond CFM's legal obligations and complied at all times with all applicable laws. Around this time, some Gunderline staff were issued with shock redundancy notices and again, CFM explained they no longer controlled the hiring policies. When Gunderline was sold to new owners Ozentech, the new owners took in-house a number of the services CFM previously provided, including the provision of labour services. CFM said they couldn't offer workers any more work because they no longer had the contract to supply labour, so many were sacked with the minimum of notice. You have to remember that often farm workers in rural Australia work and live on these properties, so the staff had not only lost their jobs, they'd lost their homes and circle of workmates as well. Workers claim Ozentech only want their choice of staff so they can grow the clean product under Australian rules and compliance requirements of their foreign buyers. You can't buy cotton from the Xinjiang province in China anymore as slavery is a real thing over there. These contract conditions include overtime and limits the maximum number of hours any employee can work each week. The partner shall respect a weekly work maximum of 48 hours, excluding overtime. Overtime hours are given on a voluntary basis, paid at an increased rate, do not occur on a regular basis, and do not exceed the limit set by local law or not exceed 8 hours per week. The partner shall respect the right of all employees to enjoy at least one day of rest after six consecutive work days. Workers claim they regularly exceeded these hours in order to get crops planted or harvested, which clearly put Gunderline's international contracts at risk and brought about the sacking of the most vocal workers. The Australian Workers' Union also has great concerns about the safety systems in place and worked with us on a story about farm safety in June this year. 
At the time, we kept Gundaline Station's name out of print, but can now reveal this is the farm that the AWU's Ron Cowdery called Cowboy Operators. I've got concerns that those standards that a lot of the farmers around Hay were to aren't going to be upheld by the, you know, the new investors that are coming in. We're in 2024. We need to get things right because farms aren't just a farm anymore, they're a workplace. And it's not to say that everyone's doing the wrong thing because I know around the district of Hay and Carathool, there's a lot of farmers that are doing the right thing. It's the other ones that bring them down. To add to the woes of this area of the Riverina and Gundaline's new owners and management, we have recently been sent a package of information by mail with copies of reports sent to the Environmental Protection Agency, New South Wales Safe Work and New South Wales Fisheries. This report contains maps, dates and photographs relating to a major fuel spill at Gundaline. We think this story is just emerging and there's more details to be uncovered, so stay tuned.